Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you, yes you, make your game dev dreams become a reality. Today's not part of the AI series, we're going to do a small little detour on the side to talk about how to make bullet trails. If you've been watching the AI series, you've seen part 7 and part 8 where we implemented ranged enemies attacking our player using bullets. One of them shoots a straight bullet out where the player currently is, and the other one has homing bullets. So we're going to take both of these different bullet variants and attach a bullet trail to them. And this doesn't have to be a bullet if you, in your game, have just any projectile that you want to have a trail. Exact same thing works, so you don't have, you don't have to turn it off, it works for any projectile, it's fine. And what we're going to do is use, if you're an experienced user in Unity, you've heard of a trail renderer. We're going to use that component to render this bullet trail. You can expand on what we do in this video to implement a particle system as well for things like maybe a rocket. You probably don't want just the trail, you probably want more of a particle system going on for that because of how smoke generally works. But we can get some really cool effects with just the trail renderer. And actually, whenever I launched Llama Survival with just seeing this, I had like a gray cube. Since it's kind of top zoomed out, I didn't want to spend all the extra polygons on making like a nice looking bullet. So it's just gray cube that was flying through. I ended up removing that actual model of the bullet altogether. So depending on your game, you can remove that as a performance optimization because you have a lot fewer draw calls without having to render this bullet flying through space if you only have the trail renderer. So you can kind of see up here how it looked before with just the gray cubes shooting and after where I removed the gray cube altogether and just have now the trail renderer going using the exact same thing that we're implementing today. And before we go any further, I just want to give a huge shout out to everyone who's supporting me on Patreon right now. I really appreciate it. Every bit helps the channel grow, reach more people, add value to more people, and that means that more people are making their game development dream become a reality. If you want to help me in that cause, you can show your support on Patreon, patreon.com slash Academy. You can get your name up on the screen, you can get a voice shout out, and some other cool perks. If you've not seen the AI series, this is building on what I did through AI series 1 through 8. At the time of releasing this, I'm up to AI series part 19. And you don't really need to know about what's happening in all of this if you're only looking at the bullet trails. But what's going to happen is we're going to spawn a couple of enemies that will automatically shoot bullets at us. If you don't know how to do that part, then highly recommend going back and watching at least AI series part 7 and 8 because that's where the enemies can learn to shoot and where we also set up the bullet dynamics for our homing bullet ranged enemy. And we're going to use both of those in this video. And since we're mostly interested in the bullet mechanics, I'm actually going to delete all the world geometry and rebake my nav meshes so my enemies can find me as I walk around on this just big flat plain. I'm also going to color the floor this kind of pink color, maybe a little bit darker pink color, just for fun. And I'm going to move my player a little bit more towards the center in here. Outside of this video, I use GIMP to do my image editing. I put together a really simple just I selected with a curve and rounded off the corner and did a gradient from white to yellow to orange for one of these bullet trails, and the other one is just a simple gradient from a gray to a transparent. These two images are included in the repo, so there's a link in the description. You can go to GitHub, you can clone this repository and get the final product of what you see in this tutorial there including these two images. But we need to select these two images and tell it that alpha is transparency for them to work right. Otherwise, we'll see like a white border around them all the time. I'll create a new material called Hot Trail. I'll make it be a fade rendering mode for that one. And then I'll create a new material called Smoke Trail. Drag in the smoke texture here and make that also fade. I'm going to set the smoothness down all the way on both of these. And to make the hot trail look a little bit cooler, I'm going to go ahead and drag the same texture to the emission and make it be an emissive texture with a small, not fully white because that's a little bit bright. So this kind of gray color. You can of course play around with these to get whatever kind of effect you like. Now that I have the materials configured, I'm going to create a new C Sharp script called Bullet Trail Scriptable Object. Some more advanced or experienced users may already guess that we're going to use a trail renderer to achieve this effect based on the name of Bullet Trail. And we're going to configure that trail renderer in the scriptable object. So that way for each bullet type that we have, we can have a different bullet trail. And we can also modify those based on, I don't know, maybe your guns are customizable and whenever it's more powerful, you wanna have like a bigger trail, something like that. You can configure that with these scriptable objects. So we'll open up the bullet trail scriptable object. We'll make it extend the scriptable object instead of mono behavior class. And I'll add a create asset menu attribute with a file name of bullet trail config and a menu name of scriptable object slash bullet trail config. 
We're gonna add some properties that we'd like to modify based on the bullet trail. There are some more things you can do, but I think these give you a pretty good result with only these variables. So I'm gonna do a public animation curve with curve, which will control how fat the trail is over time. A float time, which is how long the trail should stay alive, basically. A min vertex distance, which is how far something should travel before a new vertex is added to this trail. A public gradient, which is gonna be the color gradient, and that's the color that gets applied over the trail the material to use with a public material material, public int corner vertices, and public int end cap vertices. Those last two are whenever there's a corner, how many vertices to add in there so you get a more rounded edge or a sharper edge based on this number. And end cap vertices are at the end of the trail, how many vertices should be added at the end. In this tutorial, we're not gonna touch either of those because they're really not needed. In here, like if you've been watching the AI series, we have this pattern of the scriptable object sets up the object that it operates on. So we're going to do public void setup trail that accepts a trail renderer and just assigns all of these values. So the trail renderer has a width curve, we'll assign our width curve, it has a time, we'll assign the time, etc. through all of these attributes. So that's min vertex distance is min vertex distance, color gradients, color gradient. We want to use a shared material here and assign that to be the material, the num corner vertices to be the corner vertices, and num cap vertices to be the end cap vertices. Next up, we'll open up the bullet class and add in a public bullet trail scriptable object. We'll call it trail config and a protected trail render trail. I'll also add a private render render and attach the serialized field so we can attach that in the inspector and a private bool is disabling. Set that to false by default and duplicate our protected const string disable method. Call the new one do disable method and the string to be do disable. And the reason we want to do this is we actually want to delay the bullet being destroyed until the trail render has caught up to where the bullet is. Otherwise, you'll see a large chunk of the trail just disappear as soon as the bullet makes impact with something which isn't realistic and it's kind of jarring to the user. So we're adding all of this to allow us to delay the destroy the bullet until the trail has fully caught up and would no longer be visible. Then on awake, we'll do trail equals git component trail renderer. So we expect that the trail render is attached to the bullet. On enable, what we'll do is enable the renderer. And this is a good time actually, I think, to talk about this is you may or may not actually want to include a bullet renderer on your bullet. So in in Llama Survival, I launched the game actually without bullet trails and with just like a, a bullet cube. It's, since it's top down, it was kind of hard to make out how good the bullet was anyway. And honestly, it didn't look great. So I came back and I figured out how to do these bullet trails. That's where this video is coming from. And when I was doing profiling at the end, there are some guns that have a really high rate of fire. And those, there were a lot of extra draw calls that were happening because I'm rendering this little gray cube basically as it's flying through space. But with the trail render, I was adding an extra draw call. So some optimization that can happen depending on your game, you may or may not need this render. So I actually removed that gray cube that I had for the bullet and it honestly looks better and performs better without that render. So really consider a use case on this to see if having that actual bullet game object makes sense because it may save you performance and look better if you don't have one. But in those cases, you need to make sure you have a really good trail config so the user can really tell where the bullets are going. So we'll continue now. After render enabled is true, we will say is disabling is false and we'll call a function called configure trail. And we'll define that to be private void configure trail. We'll check if the trail is not null and the trail config is not null. If that's true, then we will do trail config dot setup trail and pass in the trail. We'll then scroll down to protected void disable. We'll check again if the trail is not null and the trail config is not null. We'll set is disabling the true and invoke that do disable method name after some delay and that delay will be the trail config dot time, meaning as soon as that trail config is no longer visible on the next frame, we will actually call this do disable method. And in the else, we will just call the do disable and we'll remove this disabling of the game object down to the do disable function. In do disable we'll check if the trail is not null and the trail config is not null again and in here what we need to do is trail.clear. If we don't clear the trail the next time this bullet is reused from our object pool we'll get a line from wherever it was disabled to wherever it spawned and that's kind of really ugly so it's really important to call this trail clear whenever we're going to disable the object and at the end of this function we will actually do that game object that set act false to disable it. When I was recording Recording the demo for later, I actually noticed here that we did not cancel the invoke of the do disable method name, which results in some artifacts in the demo. So if you add this line here, cancel invoke do disable method name, it'll prevent that kind of where some of the bullets will just disappear halfway towards traveling to the player. In previous videos, I already did the cancel invoke of the disable method name, but I forgot to do that in this video. So this is really important. Otherwise, you'll sometimes have bullets just disappear like you see in the demo in this video. When we hop back to the Unity editor and the project panel 
I'll right click create scriptable object bullet trail config and I'll make one called the hot trail config and I'll configure that. We'll set up the width curve to start at 0.25 and go down at time 1 to be 0.1. We'll keep it a little bit wider, a little bit longer, and then towards the end quickly drop down to 0.1. I'll leave the time as 0.5, the min vertex distance at 0.1, color gradient at white, and I'll drag the, the hot material to the material reference there. Then on both the bullet prefab and the homing bullet variant, I will drag the hot trail config to the trail config on both of those bullets. I'll also open up these prefabs and drag the model to the renderer. Then I'll select the enemy manager, have it spawn two enemies where it will spawn only the homing bullet ranged enemy variant and the ranged enemy variant. Once I click play, we'll see both of these enemies start shooting me and we see this pretty cool trail with that texture that I had earlier that follows those bullets wherever they go. I think it looks pretty cool, but we also have another option here. We made that smoke trail, so let's create a new smoke trail config. And for this one, we'll have the width act a little bit differently because smoke kind of goes wider at the end. We'll make it start at 0 0.25. We'll make it go up a little bit over time and then towards the end really arc up towards that three width. I'll set the time to be a little bit longer, 0.75. The min vertex distance can stay 0.1. The color grading can stay white. I'll drag the smoke trail material to the material reference. I'll readjust my curve because I noticed I accidentally messed up and didn't set the value to be high enough. It was only going to one instead of three. And then I'll select the homing bullet prefab variant and drag the smoke trail config. And if I click play again, we'll see that the non-homing bullets still chase me, shooting the same trail config as it was before, kind of missing most of the time. And the homing bullet variant has a smoke trail where it kind of tapers off at the end and gets really wide. You can couple this by attaching a particle system to your bullet, so that way it can have maybe some smoke puffs coming out of it or something like that, or sparks. Anything like that is a cool particle effect you can add in addition to these trails to really add a lot of flair into your bullets. I hope you got a lot of value out of today's video and you understand how to implement a bullet or projectile trail using the trail render that gets configured with the scriptable object. That way you can use that same scriptable object on multiple different projectiles, or you can just have one scriptable object per different projectile, depending on your game's needs. If you have been getting value out of this video, please consider liking and subscribing to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. This new video is posted every Tuesday. I'm sorry, I can't keep it together. <laughs> New videos posted every Tuesday, sometimes on other days too. If you have any questions, if you have a suggestion for a topic, or if you implemented bullet trails into your game, drop a comment down below, and I'll see you on the next video.